Uh, before I start reading, I would just like to make a shout out to Kelsey Blue Wolf. Kelsey Blue Wolf is the one who suggested this creepypasta. So thank you, Kelsey Blue Wolf, uh, for your suggestion. Also, I'd like to point out that Kelsey Blue Wolf is an amazing artist, an amazing writer. And if you would like to check out some of Kelsey Blue Wolf's work, you could follow her on, on Instagram. There will be a link in the description below uh, to her Instagram. Once again, thank you Kelsey for the suggestion. And that being said, we'll be getting right into the video. It was just this Christmas that went by and things were getting busy. I had to start buying presents for the family. I had finished shopping, but I still needed to grab a present for my little cousin. She is not very hard to shop for since she is four. She likes things like Peppa Pig and My Little Pony. She really liked, and I say liked for a reason, Max and Ruby. So when I decided to go looking for a present, I figured something like Max and Ruby uh, DVD would, be, would have been just perfect, since she likes watching them on a daily basis. However, Christmas meant that most online DVDs would be sold out at most places. I went to look on eBay as well, but I figured I couldn't trust the condition of DVDs would be in. So I was struck. I was stuck in a rut for a while, until this weird package arrived. The DVD. I was just at home still scrolling for a stupid DVD until I heard the sound of something being pushed into my letterbox of it before my dogs did and looked at the package. It seemed to be wrapped fairly bad with what looked to be like grease, grease marks and stains on it. Naturally, uh, like anyone would, I decided to open the package. Inside was something that I couldn't explain. It was a Max and Ruby DVD, but I hadn't seen one like this online. It was like some little kid had drawn on the front cover with a marker. The title just said Max and Ruby, with what looked like a poorly drawn illustration of Max and Ruby on the front. There were no names or anything, but the back but on the back, it just had a, a list of four episodes, all with blunt letters, blunt titles. Uh, for example, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. I gave the DVD a watch over, and to my surprise, the episodes were all perfectly were all, were all perfect quality, and seemed to have no flaws. It was as if it was a real DVD just with a home main cover. Uh, the only thing I thought was odd was the episode selection screen. The episodes had names, but they were all called Max, Max and Ruby 1, with the numbers being changed as it went down the list. The actual selection screen was just a pale white screen with black text with the episode list and nothing else. After giving it much thought, I decided to change the cover to something a little nicer by printing out a DVD cover that I found on Google and tracked down the names of the episodes that were labeled right. I left the episode list screen alone because I figured it was self-explanatory. Christmas went by and things went fine. I gave my little cousin her DVD and she was happy with it all through Christmas. But that was only because she hadn't watched it yet. On Boxing Day, the family had gone out for a meal and left me to babysit my cousin. I was not too bothered uh, about being left alone, being left home alone. I figured now was a good time to put on the DVD for her. I had put the DVD in and let it play while I was in the kitchen eating my dinner. From what I could hear, she had watched episode 1 to 3 so far. I was just about to finish off my noodles when I heard my cousin screaming from the other room. Dropping everything, I ran into the living room and saw my cousin curled up on the floor screaming. I had looked up at the TV and I felt my heart in my throat. What I caught a glimpse of was the most disturbing thing I had ever seen. It was what appeared to be a frame of Max and Ruby standing next to each other in complete darkness. But what made it so horrible was their lack of faces. 
They had lost their nose and mouth, and their eyes were replaced with big, hollow holes. The colors were a disgusting blood red, and there was a faint static in the background. The sound was replaced with what sounded like Max and Ruby theme being played backwards, with the faint sound of static in the mix of it all. It had to be the most disturbing thing I had ever seen, and it must have been on the screen for at least uh, 20 seconds before the screen uh, went black and the DVD turned off, which alone was weird because DVDs do not usually turn off by themselves. I was able to calm my, my cousin down, telling her it was not real, and she had just had a nightmare as she had fallen asleep in front of the DVD. However, I knew in my mind it was completely real. My parents had rung me up and told me that they were going to be out all night, so this was going to be the best opportunity to look at this DVD more closely. I did not mention it to them and had stuck it on my laptop. As soon as it loaded, I noticed that episode 0004 had been replaced with Rip, Mommy, and Daddy, which sent a deep chill down my back. Since my cousin was now asleep, I plugged in my earbuds so he can sleep without having to hear anything. Normally, an episode of Max and Ruby would have three short stories, but this episode only had one. It started off quite light-hearted. Max and Ruby were playing tag in the garden, and their parents were all on the porch watching them play. However, something was off. The sound was played in reverse, and the parents' faces were that of sadness. And film, a film grain became present and grew worse and worse every second and it panted to the mother and the father and in a deep deep sorrow the father spoke it's such a shame he said it then cut short to the sound of static and a large scream followed by the sound of two people choking while the mother and father mumbled to each other in the background but it was impossible to understand them the sounds were so realistic, it made me physically sick. The screen cut white for a split second. Then the screen transitioned over to Max and Ruby standing in front of what looked like gravestones labeled Rip, Mommy and Daddy. The two of them had no faces. At this point, there was no sound apart from faint static. The screen remained this screen remained on screen for about uh, about a minute and a half before it cut away into black. It then changed screen again and showing Max and Ruby sitting in Ruby's room ununderstandable. Whispering became apparent and grew louder over time. Both of them were sobbing uncontrollably while transparent clips of a murder played in reverse flashing on the screen. The father pulled a knife out of his neck, picked up a bloody axe, and hacked away at the corpse of the mother before she came back to life, and he walked up the stairs. By this point, the whispering became louder, but more of the whispering voices started to disappear, and the very second it came down to one voice, it was a rather, ang rather angry woman's voice, whose scream burned in hell. It was absolutely horrifying. The screen had changed the most disgusting yet saddest thing I had ever witnessed. It showed Max sitting in his room. He was standing on a chair with a noose hanging from the ceiling. He had brought it around his neck. The, scene f the screen uh, faded to black and the static got louder. Almost immediately, it then cut to Ruby walking in on, his br on her brother. She let out a gut-twisting scream. The camera was pinned on her face as the sound of the chair being kicked and the same choking from before began to play. The picture of Ruby's face stayed on the screen for a good five minutes. This time, her eyes had returned as returned it as the same gaping holes. Ruby then 
started crying. As and as before, there were no other facial features. The static slowly grew louder and drowned out the sound of her cries. The scene cut back to black with the loud static. When the screen returned, Ruby was sitting, now on her own, in the garden by two gravestones. One was labeled Rip Mommy and Daddy, and the other one was labeled Rip Brother. She then started to look at the camera with glowing blue pupils and spoke to me. Well, where was watching this? This is because you never watched any of me and my brother's episodes. So, one of these days, you'll regret this. The screen faded to black afterwards. At this point, I had already been sick and was sitting and all shaken up. The episode seemed to have come to an end, at least as the Marks, Max and Ruby theme song started to play in reverse. I was about to eject the DVD when the same image came up like it did on the TV. This time, however, there was a text above the two rabbits that said, Death is our only release. There were no credits or anything else. It stayed there for a few seconds before the DVD finally popped out. I sat there trying to understand what happened. In my shock and fear, I made a stupid decision to break the DVD up as many into many pieces as I could before leaving the house. I then shoved the pieces down the drain. Thankfully, I kept a few screenshots and saved them to my laptop. The next couple of days went past without anything unusual happening. I had a few nightmares about the DVD, but luckily that was all. My cousin had gone back home along with the rest of the family. It was late at night and my parents had gone out for dinner, leaving me to watch TV. I heard what sounded like somebody posting something to the door. At this point, the DVD had already left my mind since I hadn't told anyone about it. However, it all came flooding back when I looked down at the letter in front of me. It was just, it was just messily folded up and it read, Death is our only release.